gentlemen and welcome back to another LCTV broadcast of Lilliton High School football. My name is Ben Storm and I'm here along with a good friend of mine, Will Allen. And we're here today to give you your Lilliton Tigers versus the Gardner Wildcats. Taking a look at the schedule thus far for each team, uh, Lilliton coming in at three and two. Huge win they just got. Uh, we'll get back to that one, ladies and gents, as the Wildcats kick this one off. And it's a little squibber. It almost fumbled around, but received by the Tigers at about the 38-yard line. And, uh, you know, Will, it's, uh, it's great for you to be joining us today. Happy to be here. Can't ask for much more on a Friday night under the lights. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was homecoming night here, and it was, it's awesome to see the Tigers come running through their banner, followed by a bunch of little kids. I mean, it's always, that's always a good moment in, in a town like today. But, yeah. Yeah, we got a good matchup on our hands. We'll get back into the schedule, but the Wildcats are coming into this one 5-0. They got a great team. Littleton also has a great team as well. This should end up being a great matchup. As Milner runs left side, maybe a gain of three, maybe four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, getting back into the schedule here. Tigers, like I said, they come in at 3-2. and two. Huge win against Nipmuc. One, uh, one possession game there. They're able to come out with a W. On the flip side, you got Gardner, 5-0. and oh. They're just steamrolling opponents. Their last win, 44-8 to eight against Sturbridge. Well, this team's good, man. There's, there's no hiding Very that. Very good. And, um, you know, with, with all those things being said, well, what are some of the keys to this game for the Tigers? You know, looking at those graphics, we can see they're – Balance on both sides of the ball, offensively, defensively, they get it done. And it really has to do with the three-headed monster they have on offense. Starting with the senior, Aiden Sparrow, at running back. I mean, you want to talk efficient, this guy is just tearing it up, averaging 150 yards per game, 12 yards a carry. The Tigers are going to have to limit him. Absolutely. Absolutely well, I mean... Listen, if, if that man gets 150 yards again, there's probably a good chance that the Tigers don't come out with a win. So, like you said, stopping that run game is going to be mightily important for the Tigers. Yep. So, uh, Tigers already third and about seven here. They ran those two first plays for just about three yards combined. Mano rolls, rolling to his right. Looks like trying to find Branco, just nothing happening there. Has to put it into the dirt, and that's a quick three and out for the Tigers as the punt team comes on. Not what you want to see to start, but, you know, it's okay. Plenty of ball game left, and let's see what the defense has to say because that's really what matters tonight is that defense. Right, absolutely, Well, And, you know, one thing we should definitely talk about is, you know, Evan Mano coming back in the lineup last week. You know, he was, he was out the whole year with meniscus tears up to last week, and he's in there again today. We want to see him throwing the ball. And that's big. He takes it. Good, nice little move. Right side, pull down. Oh, and aye, it looks like aye. Tigers are going to get called with a horse collar there, and it might bring the wild, uh, Wildcats up another 15 yards after the fact. I mean, horse collar, a touchdown. Which one are you taking? <laughs> yeah, it you looked know, like he had room to go. He did, he did. But, yeah, back to... Uh, Evan Mano back in the lineup, that is just huge because he is just a generational player for this program. And to see him back on the field, it's just such a difference maker. And it really just, he's, everyone's going to rally around him. And right. I'm excited for what's in store. Absolutely, Will. As, uh, it, it is going to be a personal foul face mask on the Tigers. It'll move the ball way up for the Wildcats. And, uh, yeah, Will, you, you're talking about Mano. Mano and the two M's, Mano and Milner back there. I mean, that, that's two dynamic players, and both those guys in the same backfield is a scary sight to see. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gents, 10-22 to play. 
Wildcats at the 40. Figueroa, quick hitter to the outside, finds his man seven yards is a, roughly the game, maybe seven and a half. And you're going to see a lot of that tonight. They like the short passes. You know, something to watch out with Sparrow as well, the running back. They like to run screens. we got to be ready for those screens. We can't let them catch us off guard there. Mm -hmm. And then as they dink and dunk you, then they're going to try to go over the top to sophomore Rocco Roy. He's a speedster, let me tell you. Watch some film on him. He can really fly. Good stop up front by the Tigers. Swallow looks like maybe Alejandro up there as well as Reedy. Big third down. Yeah, you know, I mean, you'd like to see the Tigers get off the field here. They had such a short opening uh, series with the offense. I mean, to get to get this team off the field. Now, here's another thing. You stop them on third down. Well, chances are they're probably going for it on fourth. So you've got to stop them two plays in a row here. That's what the analytics would say. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, Figueroa going to toss it out to his man. Does some moving around in the backfield, and he's going. Flag. Oh. We got a flag. Back him up. It's going to be a hold. No, a block in the back. Huge for the Tigers. Block on the back on the Wildcats, and that'll send it back, I believe, 10. Now, if I'm legendary defensive coordinator coach Ferrante right here, I'm telling my guys, watch out for four, because if you're asking me, I think they're going to take a shot. Yeah, you four. Rocco Roy, the sophomore, like you were saying, the speedster on the outside. But, you know, that was kind of big on third down here. I mean, besides for obvious reasons, backing them up 10 yards. But now, I mean, if, if, they, if they throw an incomplete pass here or something, they will definitely not be going for it on fourth here. So good little break there from the Tigers. Figueroa stepping up in the pocket, has nowhere to go. Able to escape. Nice. Just kind of roaming out there in the middle of the field, nowhere to go, and a great defensive showing there from the Tigers. Looks like both teams trade a three and out. Yeah, Mil uh, Milner, Milner, and uh, I believe Rady there in on the stop, able to bottle up uh, Figueroa. Basically, give him no option to throw there. A little contrary to what we uh, thought we'd see to start here. I was yeah. expecting maybe a couple fireworks to start this game, but it looks like we might be in for a defensive battle. Yeah. What do you think? Fair catch called for by uh, Teddy Hunt. At about the 12-yard line, 8.31 remaining. And Yeah, well, I mean... You talked about their running back 150 yards a game, and they didn't seem to use him very much on that drive. No, very interesting. And, uh, you know, one thing we do want to mention tonight, ladies and gents, is, is our game sponsor tonight. And, and they were last week, for that matter, uh, DiNapoli, out there over in Westford, I believe. They do deliver, and they do. And they, I mean, and, and they do have great food. That is, you know... Definitely not in question. Had a slice before the game, yeah, let me tell you. We, we both did, ladies and gents. And scan that QR code. Get yourself a nice little pizza for this game. Get it delivered. It'll be there by halftime. Probably even sooner, knowing, knowing those guys over Treat there. Treat yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worked all week for it. Milner, big hole for him. Right side. Cuts it up right up to the middle. Maybe seven and a half on the carry. And a good first down run there. You know, Will, you talked about it in the beginning of this game. Tigers, they got to be able to run this ball because, you know, that's they're, they're a run first team. They, at least they have been up to this point in the season. Zachary Milner, he's their, he's, he's their best player, if not one of their best, and you got to get it in his hands. And the easiest way to do that is hand it to him in the backfield. Yep, and if they can get that ground game going, it opens up the whole playbook. Exactly. It really does. A little bit of a stack set down on the uh, side closest to you. Yeah, oh, high snap. snap. High snap. I believe Zach Cormier is in there at center. Uh, it was Landon Palmer to start the first couple of weeks off the season. Cormier coming with an injury. Or it might be Keenan at center. They've been switching around a little bit. We'll get back to you on that one, ladies and gents. 
And if I'm the Tigers here, I'm looking to take a shot. You know, you're playing the 5-0 and Gardner Wildcats. You can't play scared. Right. You got to just go right out. You got to be aggressive. And, and it is it was uh, Keenan in there at center. Mano drops back, fires, finds his man Milner, right side, across the 20, up to about the 28 or so. Another good play, they find their man Milner. Love the play call, he knew the pressure was coming, get it out on that screen, well done, well done. Yeah, you know, that's one of these things, you know, Mano, uh, as we mentioned, coming into this game, he was, he was injured, he didn't get a lot of, you know, playing, starting reps over there at quarterback, so to come into this game, you know, they got to get him going on these quick hitters, get him, get him into a rhythm early. And then maybe we test downfield a little more. All right, so a two by two set, Milner in the backfield. They motion Teddy Hunt and they just hand it to Milner and he's going nowhere. Awful block in there from the Tigers as Dakota Wells comes up with a stop there for the Wildcats. And that's a big play for them on first down to back the Tigers up an additional uh, like nine yards, big loss there. Got back there in a hurry, wrapped Milliner up. Not much he can do there. Nope, nope. That's something that this uh, Gardner team is known for. That pass rush is good. You know, well, we were looking at these guys in warm-ups and saying, dang, they, they got some big bodies over oh, there. Yeah. Back in my playing days, looking across the sideline, I would not want to see some of those <laughs> guys I'm about to go up against. Second and 20, ladies and gents. And they just keep feeding them. Yeah, they're just trying to get some of the lost yardage back. They pick up maybe about five yards. It's going to bring up third down. And uh, well, at uh, third and maybe, what, 15 is it? You can pretty much expect the Tigers to be passing this one. Maybe a little bootleg screen. What do you think? Yes, but I would proceed with caution. You don't want any game-breaking turnovers here. Let's right. let's be careful. Let's if we don't get the first down here, we're on the next play. Right. Can't be afraid to throw it away if your man isn't open. They do take a shot upfield. Man open. Yeah, Bronco going. has it. He's going. He's running. Across the ten. He's going to be in there Touch for man. a Tiger touchdown. A huge play on third and fifteen. Me and Will were just talking about it. You know, now is the time to take your shot. It's nothing but a pass down, and that's just exactly what they do. Bronco, wide open, catch, run it with his speed. He's gone. Beautiful throw from Evan Mano there, and that's just what he brings to the team. Before In his absence, we're not seeing plays like that from the Tigers, no, and now not. that he's back, it's an instant change. Great Ladies. play. Like we said before, can't be scared. Take your shot. Right. Love to see it. Right. Hop out to that early lead. So we do believe the Tigers are going to go for two here. They, they have been a kicking team, but that has changed recently. We weren't sure. If they just go with a quick snapper right in there. I believe he's going to be short though, and they do not convert. You know, Will, if it's, I'm not sure what's going on with Branko, but he was starting the season kicking extra points. And, and if I were the Tigers there, I would have just kicked the extra point and gone up seven. Now, that being said, I don't know if Branko's leg is bothering him, but uh, it didn't seem to look like it was bothering him on that touchdown. And I think there was a fumble on that play, recovered by number five of the Wildcats. So that, I think that's what happened there. Ball got loose, but you know, it's nonetheless, just one point. Yeah. carry the momentum on the defense and let's get the ball back for the offense. Right. Well, Tigers defense looked pretty strong to start the game. I mean, they had, they had, it seemed like they had Figueroa under wraps, a couple of penalties there for the Tigers, but that's really the only yards that the Wildcats could muster up. Yeah, now the Wildcats facing a Six nothing deficit. They're gonna look to put the hands in their quarterbacks. And you know, he's averaging only eight passes a game, but when he does drop back, he's <laughs> looking good. downfield. Yeah, yeah. And you, you were saying Rocco Roy, the speedster, yeah. he's he's got quite the staff buck behind him. So maybe maybe we'll see him tonight. I mean, it's it's seeming like they're gonna have to pass, but you just never know. The Tigers, they they haven't been a big play team. We haven't seen a lot of that. But it's a really great night for it tonight. 
And, um, you know, so we'll see. We'll see if the Tigers can continue to pass this ball if they decide to run it more. I mean, ladies and gents, you're just going to have to stick around to find out. As they go with a little poocher, it was close. They, they went for like a little uh, surprise onside kick like Sean Payton did a, about 15 years ago in the Super Bowl. And uh looks like Branco just towed it, got, got a little bit too much under it and, and kicked that one straight out of bounds. You know, I don't mind it. We're playing aggressive. We're going right at him, and I yeah. love to see it. I mean, we almost got that right there. Can't blame him. It's no, I mean, enough. right, right. I mean, you're playing a 5-0 and team. you got to take some chances. Exactly. You just do. Now, get this. I know we keep going back to this Rocco kid. But <laughs> He's got a good name. He does. Five games, five receptions. That's one reception per <laughs> game. But you know how many yards he's averaging on those receptions? 56 yards per reception. So, like we said, he's flying downfield, and they're just throwing the ball up to him. We can't let that happen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're going to have to be on the lookout for that. If I'm Ferrante, I'm telling the kid who's lining up across from him, maybe cheat back a little, you know? Just cheat <laughs> yeah. back a little bit, a couple yep, of yards. Just give him a couple of yards, hurt. yeah. Well, so, this, t this kickoff is taking a little bit. Uh, I think the uh, Wildcats decided to add that yardage onto the kick itself, so it pushes the kick back a little bit. Now, last kickoff we saw a face mask, correct? Yes, it was it was a face mask and then a horse collar on the offensive drive. As the Wildcats kind of struggle to pick it up, but the road runner, I mean that kid, it's good to swallow that kid up too because he looked pretty fast there when he got the ball. But they stop him just about at the 39 yard line, and this Tigers D is ready to rumble. Will I know you know you and I played on the same defense, coached by Carlo Ferrante, and you know we really can't say enough good things about the guy. No, he really pushes you to your limits. He forces you to be tough, and sometimes that's what defense is all about. It's not about the talent. It's about how much you want it, and he gets the most out of his guys, and, you know, you really go out there and play for him. He's, right, exactly. He's a leader. He is. As they bring number three in motion, Figueroa is going to hand this one off to the tailback up to maybe about two or three yards with the reach. Now, we expected this. They're going to try to get Sparrow going, number six. He's the best player on their team. Yeah. I mean, he's just a game breaker. If Littleton can keep him under wraps like they have so far, yep. it should be a good recipe for success. Yeah, I mean, in, in that run game, I mean, it, it's stout because of that old line as well. You know, like some of those guys out there look huge. Number 73, Jaden Favreau. He's a senior on the right edge. He's he. They don't have his weight listed here, but he's, he's not too short at 300 pounds. How about this Tigers pass rush to start the game? Absolutely. I mean, you're talking about how big they are, but they ain't doing a good job blocking, that's for sure. <laughs> nope. No, it, hey, as, as Ferrante would say, B-I-G, don't spell tough. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened there as, as uh, I believe, Reedy and... Um, King Pru in on the stop, or at least able to get uh, Figueroa to uh, get rid of it and throw it at the ground. Which is going to bring up third and seven, and uh, the Wildcats do take a timeout here. Ben, what do you think they're cooking up here? I don't know. I mean, this is, this is going to be an important play. If the Tigers can get them off. The field here, that would be huge. I mean, you, but you have to think they're going to pass this one here. Oh, absolutely. Now, now, maybe they run a bootleg with Figueroa. Maybe they do a screen pass. Now, Figueroa, you know, you were saying this stuff at the beginning of the game. He's, He's got a gun. Like, he's the, the stats would show it, but, you know, we, we really haven't seen it yet. No, we haven't. And as you mentioned, the stats, I, averaging 114 yards per game, most of those to Rocco. <laughs> yeah. Eight touchdowns to zero interceptions. Yep. He's taking care of the ball. Mm -hmm. Can't ask for much more. And then get this, a 135 QB rating. I mean, that's near perfect. <laughs> it is. So he's just been playing lights out football, and, you know, he's a heck of a player. But so far the Tigers have been getting after him, and I'm sure that's what Ferrante's game plan was coming in. we got to get after this guy. Right, right. All right, well, we'll see what they cooked up here on third down. Figueroa drops back. 
taking a shot here to Rocco, I believe. That not was Rocco, the man. Not, not Rocco. That's going to be Dakota Wells. He had some Rocco speed, but he did not have a Rocco catch. <laughs> and that brings up fourth down. And that, and that will also bring out the punting unit for the Wildcats. And, you know, if you're Littleton and you're Ferrante especially, you got to be fired up about how the way your defense is playing right now. And, you know, Will, you talked about it before. You know, Ferrante, he gets you in the game emotionally. And not, not, it's not only his brains. He just gets you to play your heart out. He really does, you know. He's in it just as much as the players are. Mm -hmm. He loves this. It's his passion, and that's why I'm sure he's back on the sidelines after our retirement and then comes yep, back. Just couldn't get enough. Exactly. And as you may know, I'm sure he gave them the pe pep talk at yesterday's walkthrough. We got to polish it up, <laughs> yeah. and then we're done. Polish it up. Yep, yep. And that used to get me fired up <laughs> back in the day, let me tell you. Yep. Yep, he certainly knows how to get you fired up as the uh, Tigers offense is going to take the field here at the 32-yard line. And we'll see if what they, what they do to follow up that big touchdown pass from Mano to uh, Branco. They go with a two-by-one. And they just hand it to Melner up the gut. A little bit of room, but not much. Maybe three yards, two and a half. Stay with what's been working, though. Feed Milner, and then when they least expect it, fire over the top. I mean. Right. And you know, you know Gardner was geared up in, uh, going into this game to stop the run because they know, they know, they've been watching the film. They know what Milner's doing. He, guy's almost, guy's getting at least five yards of carry. I think he's averaging in almost nine the last time I checked the stat book. And so, you know, maybe that's what they were doing on that third down. They were just keying Milner, and boom, Branco slips up over the top. So second and about, uh, let's call it seven and a half. Give it to Milner again. He's got room up the middle. And to Game add five. to your point about Gardner wanting to stop the run, I think Littleton's yeah. really benefiting mm -hmm. from... Uh, Evan Mano, his re resurgence here in this game, Gardner didn't know what to expect from him. They didn't have any film on the guy. And I'm sure Littleton, you know, had him marked questionable throughout the week, <laughs> yeah. not trying to let on anything. And then as soon as game time comes, he's in. Yeah, off the injury report, yeah. No time for Gardner to prepare, and we saw it there in that first drive. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to tighten up a little bit now. They know the kick and sling it, but... Right, yeah. We did see a little of Mano throwing last game, but... Certainly nothing like we've already seen so far tonight. As they go hurry up and go with a little QB keeper. Oh, and he breaks through. It wasn't a QB keeper. It was a, it was a snap, hand, quick handoff over to uh, Milner. And, and he runs it right up the gut for maybe about 20 yards. And, and he just, it looked like there was no room. And he just kind of squirts on through. Kind of remind me of that Najee Harris run against the Browns. <laughs> Oh boy, I'd love to forget about that one. Lost me the fantasy championship. <laughs> yeah, I, and that's why I bring it up, you know. But hey, it's hey, funny, we're laughing now, but it wasn't funny then. No. <laughs> no man I'd rather lose to than your dad, though. Yeah. So. yeah, that's a good way to think about it. A little stack there on the uh, far side of the screen, but it's just a little window dressing for Milner because they're just feeding this man and he's just chugging. And you know with Milner, it's going to take at least three guys to bring him down. And you got to hit him low. If you hit him up high, he's just going to shed you right off. So, you know, this first quarter, it's been kind of a lengthy one. It's winded down here uh, at the end, you know, uh, under a minute and a half to play. The Tigers can keep this ball all the way through this uh first period and then come out in the second and continue this drive on the other side of the field I mean shh, and wouldn't you know we all for, love it you know for Gardner every time they got to take down Milner it just keeps getting longer and longer yeah yep. as we go to the game. Milner they do a little swing toss I love the vision he possesses out of the back but I mean he just has a great he feel does. for it. He's a natural. You can really tell. He does. He he he's, he has a, he does a great job finding the hole. Ladies and gents, one thing I I do want to mention is uh, Lincoln Palmer normally in the booth 
uh, on, you know, these Friday nights doing the game, you know, he's not here today. He's in Maine. He, he's got more important things to do. <laughs> His words, not mine. <laughs> uh, but again, if you're just joining us, ladies and gents, Will Allen here with Ben Storman on the call as we're uh, inching down here first quarter. And I couldn't be happier to be here filling in for a good pal of mine, Lincoln Palmer. I mean, no easy feat, as you know. Lincoln Palmer, a fan favorite around this neck of the woods. But yep. Yep. And a, a good run there by Milner. Let's not let that go unnoticed. And they're they're down to about the 10-yard line. And, and seemingly, they're going to punch this one in here as they do drain the clock here in the last second to go in the first quarter. Well, well, you know what? From the Littleton side of things, this game is going very, very well for them. Oh, yeah. They got everything going defensively. They're stopping the run, doing everything right. And offensively, they're just giving it to Milner and then taking their shot when they have to. And as long as that can keep going, I don't see a reason why they shouldn't be coming out of here for him, too. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, looking back at the Tigers' schedule. Yeah, see, we got Air Shirley with the win, 21 nothing. You know, I didn't see that game, but hey, the first score game says of the all year. you need to know. So, uh, I mean, next week uh, at St. Paul's, I believe, is that a Thursday game, Mark, or a Saturday game? Yeah, it's Saturday. It's going to be a Saturday at St. Paul. We do not play them very much, but that is over there. And then followed up by Quabbin on Halloween night. That is also going to be a home game, guys. And I believe that is a Thursday. And that, that place should be bumping Halloween night at home. And then finish up the season at Air Shirley again. We, we know that game well. The classic finish up the Turkey Bowl. Yes, sir. All right, so the Tigers come trotting on along down to this side of the field. It's nice to not have a right crook of my neck. Now I can just kind of <laughs> look over to the left a little more. And they got first and goal, and let's see if they can punch this one in. Milner in the backfield. Looks like he got uh, Teddy Hunt out wide. They just pitch it to Milner, looking for room. Not much. Not much. Maybe a yard, maybe two on Looks that. Like we've got about nine yards to go from the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll second and goal, but seven yards out, maybe eight, eight and a half. Yeah, something like that. You know, and if I'm the Tigers, I might I might just run this thing four times if I have to. I mean, you don't want to make any mistakes down in this area. They do run it to Milner. He's chug-a-lugging up to about the five-yard line. It's never going to be the first guy that gets it down. You got to get a couple of them. <laughs> yep. Yep, you got to gang tackle him. You got to gang tackle him. Third and goal. I don't think there's any reason you don't go back to the run here. And right. depending on what happens, we can maybe see a pass on fourth. I'm yeah. sure we'll be going for it if we didn't kick the extra point. Right. I would agree. I'd say you got you got two downs to get five yards here. And, you know, if you can't do it, maybe you didn't deserve it anyway. Mano. Just going to give it off to Milner. Has room. Searching. Did reach for the pylon, and he's going to get there. It, that was very, very close. But the Tigers get, as Palmer would say, the Tiger touch. And they call that a touchdown. His knee might have been down. It's tough to see from here. He did stretch that ball out. Very, very, very close as we just peer in on replay. But, um... Yeah, great job there from the Tigers. I mean, you, you give Milner the ball, he's got a nose for the end zone. And they are going to kick the extra point, which, which makes me wonder. I wonder why they didn't just kick it the first time, but they're going to take their points here. Snap hold, Bronco kicks a leg through, and that one just gets swallowed up. Block there, couldn't see exactly who did it. Looked like... Uh, Maybe uh, number five, Dakota Wells, getting his hands in there and off the edge to, to stop that one. But nonetheless, I mean, another great drive there from the Tigers. Looking really strong there, running the ball. I mean, you know it's a good drive when they don't even have to put it through the air. Just keep it <laughs> on the ground, ground and pound. Right. Right. 
And tonight's game sponsor, as we mentioned earlier, DiNapoli's Pizza. This is some good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Had a slice of the cheese before the game and filled me up. And <laughs> on a warm, warm piece of pizza on a cold night tonight, goes hand in hand. And you got the QR code in the top right there. You want to scan that and order yourself a pie, a nice little pie, and enjoy the game. Yeah, yep, uh, over there, Denapolis over there on uh, Great Road, <laughs> right past the uh, Littleton Town Line, something like that, anyway. Just over into Westford, guys. You think we're going to see the onside kick here again? <laughs> you know, if I were Littleton, I'd take what you got and I'd just boot this one as far as you can. Make them work the full mm -hmm. length of the field. Absolutely, I mean, make Figueroa work. He's, he's supposed to be a stud. He, we haven't seen much of him yet. And they boot this one. It's a squibber, and it, and it ends up bounds. going out of bounds, maybe at the two-yard line. Yeah. Tough break. Smart play by the Gardner receiver to let that one go. Yeah, through. he was risking it. was rolling all the way down there. Almost oh, snuck in the man. coffin corner, but it doesn't. Let's see the Tigers defense if they can stand tall again. Right. I think uh, Gardner might have a little bit more of a sense of urgency here. And I mean, if I were them, I'm going to Sparrow. Let's see what he's got. I mean, he's been quiet all game. Yep. Figueroa hands it off inside. Maybe a gain of five. They hand that one to uh, Sparrow that time. A bit shaken up on that play as he comes up slow. Lumping back to the huddle. Sparrow, one of the captains over there in uh, Gardner for the Wildcats. You know, Will's just talking about him. Seems to be a really good player. Seems to have all the intangibles. We've yet to see it tonight. That being said, we're only just a, about a quarter and change into this one. Get this. Gardner played five games this year. Four out of those fives, guess who the player of the game was? Mr. Jack Sparrow. Yep. <laughs> the captain. Reaches for the first down, but it looks like he's going to come up short. Yeah, short by just a yard. That's going to bring up third and one. Tigers can uh, stuff him here. It's decision-making time over there for Gardner. Well, it's a, you know, I must say it's a beautiful night here in Littleton, Mass. You know, it's a little nippy, but the sky's clear. The wind is really not a factor. Is and this, it's just um, a good night for football. Is this Evan Fitzgerald we see on the bench here getting a little bit of yeah. work from the trainer? He, yes, good eye, Will. Hopefully he's okay. I know he's a looks big like he part, just popped up back and ready to go. Yeah, good to see. Maybe at halftime we'll have to check in on that, get a little update. Right. And uh, I kind of missed that pause of game there. I think it was a timeout though on the Tigers. Kind of missed it. Fitzgerald was over here getting worked on, like Will was saying, and that's that's all, all my attention was on. But the refs kind of. Maybe seem to be discussing something. I'm not sure. Maybe I think not. Littleton called a timeout here. Regroup. Yeah. Make sure that we're all on the same page. Last thing we need is Gardner to break one here. As we got nine minutes to go before the half. I mean, that, that number 73 is a big man. And number 75 as well. I mean, I mean, one thing you have to take into to account here is, judging from the scores, Gardner has won, uh, won by. I mean, they they have not been close to a, they have not been used to a close game. Is what I mean to say. As Figueroa takes a QB keeper and is no, enough the all. one yard for the first down and plenty more up to the fifty. Their roughly. past four games have just been absolute blowouts. And yeah. The, the only close game you could say is the first game of the season against Quabbin, 26-14. Yep. Other than that, it's just been – they've been on cruise control, really, and the Tigers have come out here and punched them in the mouth and yeah. see how they respond. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they 
it's it's kind of hard when you you face a little adversity when you haven't been when you know you've been playing cupcakes it seems from <laughs> from the looks of it laundry on the field looks like a and hole. another one yeah about the adversity i mean they haven't faced much this season as we mentioned and we're going to see what they're really made of are they going to just look for that final whistle of the fourth quarter hop back on that bus and <laughs> ship it back to gardner are they going to fight and try to you know play spoiler on the tigers home turf yeah yeah you know you you you, you, you have all these blowouts, and then all of a sudden you're down 12 points to the home team in a raucous environment. And, um, you know, you got to step up. You got to step up, and, you know, we'll see who's on top of Tiger Mountain when all is said and done. I mean, this is exactly why you run sprints after practice for moments like these, that extra juice. Yeah. I, I th there were multiple flags. I think they called a pre-snap penalty, maybe a false start, because it just moves them back five yards, so it'll bring up first and 15. Figueroa drops back, looking for his man. Great defense with him stride for stride. Yeah, that's that, much more. That was uh, Maddox Jordan there, who was the the targeted receiver and just blanketed by Tyler Branco. Yeah, Branco. You know, we we'd been calling him Bronco, and then all of a sudden, he he get the word that it's Branco. It's not Bronco. You know, and and. He he does. He, the thing is, he runs like a Bronco, so that's why it's a little confusing. <laughs> All right, second well, and fifteen. Don't be surprised if they go right back to the air. Figueroa under pressure just kind of has to dump it off, it. and he had to get rid of it so quickly. He was trying to find Andre Marlins out of the backfield, and it just he had to get rid of it so quick. He just overthrew him just a little bit. I mean, this has been a reoccurring theme for uh, Alex Javier Figuero here. I mean, he's dumping it to the flats, and he's just missing the guys. I mean, I think he's too used to just chucking it downfield. He's not used to those fundamental short throws. He's, I mean, that's th his third guy he's missed just yeah. in this first half alone. Yeah, you know, he's a pretty big dude from here, at least. You know, at least for a quarterback. So, I mean, you think you think maybe they try to run it with him. I mean, we haven't really seen much play action. They're just doing this standard shotgun drop back pass, and the Tigers are all over it as they do it again. And the Tigers are all over it. He escapes, though, and is able to dump it off. And that's a good play. He gets the ball over there to Dakota Wells, who's been his main man tonight. And that's enough to move the chains. Yeah, tough break. You got to keep him in the pocket, though. You know, you can't let him make those unconventional throws. You got to yeah. keep him contained. They had him dead to rights, man. They had some. Ti there were some tigers in the backfield waiting for him, and he was able to kind of squirt out of it and make a play for himself. And you know, Ferrante hates to see that because they had him in the backfield mm -hmm. and they just broke contain. Ferrante had that blitz dialed up. They do run this one. Oh, great cutback. Good vision there by Spale. Got to give credit where credit is due. But <laughs> yeah. Limited the gain, and now let's see what that red zone defense has got. You know, Ben, don't break. Ben, yeah. don't break. You know, a lot of these offenses, you know, we've seen, you know, at least in the NFL, you, you have such a good, you know, you're, you're so good at moving the ball in wide open spaces. Then you get down into the red zone, things just become a little bit more compact. It becomes a lot harder to move the ball here. So, you know, as Will said, we'll see what they got in the red uh, red area. They give it to Sparrow, and he cuts it back, and that's just a great run, and he's going to be very close to a touchdown. One yard line. Yeah, they're going to mark him short. And I think that was Dakota Wells, number five on the carry, if I'm not mistaken. Great cut back, hits it to the right, almost gets to that pylon, but I could just short. I think that was Wells. I think that was Wells, not Sparrow. Number five, not number six. 
Let's see if we can have a goal line stand here. Yeah, they, they, they're coming out in the eye for him, and they got Sparrow just waiting for it, it seems, back there. But instead, they go Figueroa up the gut, and he's going to get in there easily. I just talked about that big body of his. He looks like a hefty guy. You know, it's kind of hard to tell from here, but he's got to be at least six feet and at least 225. He's a big dude, and, you know, he just kind of sticks his head down, nestles right in there, and plows ahead for the touchdown. Yeah, I think looking at the scouting report, I remember seeing 6'2", about 2.30. Yeah, He's a sounds big about kid. right. Yep. And it's all down there in those legs, and he just drove right through into the end zone. Yep. You could tell he wanted that one. <laughs> Absolutely. And just, just a little too easy there that you thought the Tigers may have had them. They br bring up a big third down, but they aren't able to make the stop, and all of a sudden Gardner has a run game. Going for two here. And he airs it out. Oh, there's the gun on a slant. He hits his man. Maddox Jordan with the catch. Yeah, but that was a great toss there by Figueroa. Took his three-step drop and just fired it he ripped the seatbelt down as they say and just put it right into his gut for the two-pointer and for those fantasy managers out there don't get too excited it's just a two-point conversion <laughs> not a touchdown yep but uh, nonetheless uh, all i mean the tigers they were up by 12 they mi they missed the extra point slash didn't get the two-point conversion on the first one and all of a sudden they they, they were up 12 and one possession later, they're only up four points. I mean, you had to figure they were going to punch it eventually, just this high-powered offense. Yeah, big old Love line. to see Littleton stick to the ground, come out here, and respond. Let's try to milk this clock down. You've got five minutes. We don't want to give it back to them with too much time. Right, So let's exactly. make them use those timeouts, perhaps, and get some points on the board here going into half. They go with a little squibber, fielded there by uh, Nicholas Brooks, Nick Brooks up to maybe about the 28 or so, maybe 29. And we'll see. The Tigers, I mean, I, I'd expect them to come out and try to run this ball again. I mean, why wouldn't they? They were, they were able to run it great last drive. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. But, and then, you know, you got to think, Gardner, they just got a bunch of momentum from that drive of theirs. So, you know, maybe they'll be rearing back ready for this run. They bring Branco in motion. A little bit of a floater of a snap. Gets it off fine, though, and Milner's swallowed up there in the backfield. Aiden Sparrow, not known for his defense, but comes up with the tackle there. Yeah, looks like Milner was just able to get back to the line of scrimmage on that one. And as you were saying, well, they're trying to take as much time as possible right now. They're absolutely in no rush. They get the ball at half two, right? Yep. Put so maybe they can double up. Here without letting Gardner see the ball, that would be huge. Passes out there over to Teddy Hunt and just not much doing. Maybe three yards on the carry. And that's going to bring up third and seven. Good job by Teddy Hunt sealing that ball in there. You know, the defender was all over him. Picked up a good amount of yards, actually. I mean, it looks like we're looking at a third and seven about now. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a big call, Will. I mean, what I mean, what do you think? What do you think they should run here? I mean, we saw a similar uh, situation earlier in the game, and it was uh, Bronco, or Branco, rather, <laughs> yeah. streaking down the sidelines for six. So It was Branco on his Bronco down to the goal line. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe they take the shot. Maybe they hit him with a little screen. Oh. Five yards. And listen, if you're Gardner, you have to know. All we got to do is just watch this ball. Watch the ball and don't jump. And that time, 
you know, a little, if someone's not saying it in the huddle, you know, and you get caught up in the moment, it's very easy to jump. And I, you know, I would know, you know, being up front there over the ball as a lineman, sometimes things just get, you know, the game just kind of takes over your brain and you're, you're unable to focus on the ball. But, you know, it's, it's ball first, you know, you got to find it and then you got to go play the game. And that penalty totally changes the complexity of this play. I right. mean, you went from an obvious passing down to an obvious running down. Yes. I mean, you almost think the Tigers have two plays here. They hurry up. They kind of go with a tush push look. Looks like Made famous short. by the Philadelphia oh. Eagles. He's still chugging. And he, yeah, he does look like he's short as Not Will short, but mutters under his breath. I mean, as we keep going back to you got to play with some urgency. If yeah. you're the Tigers, don't play scared. I'm going for it here. Yeah. I'm going for it. Let's keep that clock going. Let's keep possession of the ball. This is a huge play you right know, here. Perhaps the biggest of the game. Right. You know, I, I'd rather I'd rather see them on that play get Milner going downfield because the thing is you've already ran that sneak play uh, at least once this game. It might have been twice. And, you know, the problem is it's so hard to, as a quarterback, it's so hard to get your momentum going one way when you just – all of a sudden, you're standing, and then you're just going right at the snap of the ball. Whereas you get Milner going downfield, you get him with a head of speed. You know he can bust through that line. So anyway, just my take. That's a good. That's a good take. And not to mention the fact that your quarterback is still dealing with that knee injury. I mean, he's got a brace on it, and right. Yeah, you don't so, want to get him injured. Right, right. So the Tigers, they, they elect there to, to let the clock run down as much as possible, and then they rip another timeout. I believe their second one of the quarter. Good timeout there, you know, get everyone focused, know what the play is. And, uh, I mean, this is a huge play. You, you don't want to get caught unprepared, you know. You might as well take your timeouts. You, you don't have... You know, you don't. It's it's not like you you can keep them for the second half. So, good Can't time out it. there. Yeah, as you said, I think you put the ball in the hands of Milner here. I mean, go with what's been working. Yep. Even if he does get stopped in the backfield, he's got the power to keep going through the defender and perhaps mm -hmm. fight for that extra yard. Mm -hmm. He's gonna force the defense to make a play, and that's just what you want in this situation. Because, you know, I. You know, I'll tell you, Gardner's sitting here, and they got to be thinking number ten's getting this ball. I mean, have to. So but it's can you stop it? Is yeah. The question. Who wants it more is really what it comes down to. As Lincoln would say, it's gut check time. <laughs> Give it to Melner. He chug a lugs. And you know, I think Evan Fitzgerald thought there might be a penalty on him there, but as far as yeah, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. he was just going in motion there, perhaps by design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I saw it too. It looked like he did have a little hitch in his step when he went to go make the motion there. But hey, nonetheless, the laundry stays off the field, and the Tigers move the chains in a big situation. And what this allows them to do is run this clock down a lot more than if they, you know, got stuff there and had to kick the ball back. And that is big in this situation Huge against first a good down. team. Biggest of the game. They hand this one to, uh, I believe, Brooks. Oh, nope, Teddy Hunt. He spins up to about the uh, 46 or 47 after a gain of four or five. And that's going to take us about to a minute and a half. And this clock is just chugging for the Tigers. Now, the thing is, well, you talked about it. You know, you don't want to give Gardner too much time, but at this, at, at what point do you start to hurry it up a little bit here? Because, you know, I know you had the big play earlier, but you're not known to be a big play offense, and you, you need some time to score here. I think we're going to start to see them, you know, dial up the sense of urgency here. As, <laughs> as, they, they, run hand it <laughs> as they hand it off for a one-yard game. Now you really got to get going because by the time this ball snapped, we're going to be under a minute here, and all you got is one timeout. I, I get playing conservative here, but at the same token, you want to get more points on the yeah. board going into half. Yeah, and, you know, this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, you know, the Tigers, they, with some with a few a couple minutes to go, they at, at times they've just seemed like they're content taking it down, even when they does seem like they have time to score. 
they do pass this one. And he, he's got to get rid of it and look out because he's swallowed up there. Number 11 on the stop. Curious to see if uh, Gardner ends up taking a timeout here. And I think they will. Yeah. Just as you were saying it, they do rip a timeout. And that's, that's exactly what you didn't want if you're the Tigers, to take a huge sack like that. I will say, smart play by Evan Mano there to just take the sack. Forces Gardner to have to use one of those right, timeouts. Right. He didn't have anything there, just tucks it and hits the deck. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, yep, yep. Like you say, keeps the clock going much better than the alternative of just throwing it up there, trying to make something happen because you're, you know, you want to be the hero. And then you end up, and then the worst case scenario happens and you turn the ball over. You know, disappointing finish to that drive, but they did milk a lot of that clock. And they did. We can stop the Wildcats here from scoring, take a. 12 day lead going into half, that would be huge and can't complain with that. Absolutely. Cannot complain. They do send Bron Branco, excuse me, back there to uh, kick the punt. He does have a leg. Go with that rugby style, which is what they've been doing lately. What a punt. I and mean, a beautiful bounce. Wow. Doesn't even give him a chance to return it. I mean, yeah. perfectly executed. Yeah, you know, that was, that was just a liner and it bounces about 20 yards and out of bounds and you know well that's kind of like when you're when you're on the golf course and you thin one but she rolls <laughs> she rolls about 200 yards and you about love how it. pretty it looks it's just about where it ends up yep exactly and uh in the case of the tigers it ends up all the way back at the 18 or 19 yard line and and they force the wildcats to go the length of the field 19 seconds now if you're the Wildcats, if if it's me, I'm I'm taking this. I'm I'm talking to a Sparrow. I'm saying, Sparrow, we're giving you this ball. Just don't fumble it. You can try to make a play, but just don't fumble it. But I don't, I have no like I'm not. I have no intentions of passing this ball and making a mistake right now. You know what I mean? Looks like Ferrante has the squad in prevent here. Trick play. And there's Rocco with the speed. This is the man. Got to contain him. Cuts it back. Uh-oh. Has room. Come on. Crossing the 50 now. Franco's back there trying to take off the angle. Franco's got him. Good tackle. That's huge. Yeah. With two seconds left, all they have is a shot at the end zone here. Yeah. A great return there, or a great run there from Rocco. It was a little misdirection. And I do have to say, great play by Bronco because, Will, I know you saw this as a, as a defensive back. He didn't sell out to make the tackle. He sold out to contain the runner and let his teammates come up and make the play. And Force that's him back inside. Yeah. Right. And that and that was huge there. As there is an injury on the field right now, it's hard to see. I can't really tell exactly who that is. It, it, I do believe it is a Gardner player. I want to say number seven from the looks of it. Um, I think it's Dakota. No, Maddox Jordan down on the sideline. If I remember correctly, he scored the two-point conversion earlier. Yes, he did from the bullet from Figueroa. But honestly, I'm still not seeing where the player is hurt. Okay. The trainer's over there helping him out. Okay, all right. He looks pretty shaken up. Yeah, it's hard to see through the sea of white players. But, uh... Can only hope he uh, gets back up. And yeah, I mean that's just you. You, you know, no matter what team you root for, you just don't want uh, to see that. But, ladies and gents, now we encourage you to stay for halftime because we think, we think the Littleton High School cheerleaders will be out there to perform for halftime. And well, as you know, they always bring a show. You know, they're well choreographed. You know, when, when they do, it's not all the time, but when they do perform, it's to the best of their ability. Absolutely. They do a great job. So big play, Figueroa, rolling right. Rady on pursuit. Oh, good move to shake him. And then he just lost it up there. Teddy Hunt from the looks of it. Yeah, they were stopped there by the Tigers after yeah. you let Rocco get loose. You know, a good stop, but you—I you, mean—you'd like to see the the Tigers, uh, 
you know, not make it that close at the end of the day. Yep. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to take us to halftime. And, you know, like we said, we encourage you to stick around for the cheerleaders. You know, they always do a great job, ladies and gents. And, and we're, we should be in store for a great second half. We got a close game, a one possession game on our hands here in Littleton, Mass. So don't stick with anywhere, us, guys. Anymore. Don't want to miss it. Yep, don't want to miss it. And we'll talk to you for the second half. Homecoming court for the seniors, Callum McNeil and Raquel Rodriguez. And now your 2024 Monarch and Sovereign, Jimmy DeVogel and Dorothy Galvin. Congratulations to the homecoming court, Monarch and Sovereign. Congratulations. And now I'd like to welcome your 2024 cheer team. I would like to invite the youth flag football players to the field. And 
welcome back into Alumni Field here in Littleton, Mass. And, you know, ladies and gents, if you're just joining us, Ben Storm and Will Allen on the call. We're here to watch your Littleton Tigers take on the Gardner Wildcats. You know, Will, it's been a great game so far. 12-8. to 8. The score says it all. It's a low score so far. Should be very close, and it's shaping up to, to make for a great second half as Branko kicks the sucker off and we're ready to rumble. Really yeah. interesting special teams play there. It looks like a line drive. It was knocked down by the Wildcats and then picked up by another one. And I did just want to mention here before we get going, we did get word that number seven, uh, Maddox Jordan for Gardner, who went down to end that second half, is back up in, in the game here, as you can see. So good, good to have him back out there. You That's good. To see an injury That's like good. That. Exactly. No matter who you're rooting for, like we said, uh, you know, you, you just don't want to see it. Uh, one quick shout out we want to make, uh, you know, the, the boys over there at Fairfield watching the game, including John Woodward, uh, you know, who's an old, old teammate. A.K.A. Woodhand. Yeah. Or Woody, you know, one of the two. Um, you know, I know me and Will have fond memories of playing with the kids, so just wanted to make a quick shout out with, to him. Yeah, great kid. Love to have him here tonight, but. I'm sure he's busy at school getting in those books, you know, <laughs> yep. academic weapon. Yep, as, uh, at, uh, as Sparrow takes his ball up for maybe about a five-yard gain on first down. I mean, so the Wildcats, they, they start with really good field position because of that kickoff. Again, they Tigers try to go for a little liner, gets knocked down and picked up, and all of a sudden, one five run, five yard run later, and we're over here sitting at about the 46 or so of the Littleton Tigers, 47 make it. And this is a big possession here. Can Gardner put this in the end zone and take the lead, or does Littleton stand tall once again and get that ball back to the offense? We have a stoppage in play here, it looks like. Got a ref talking over there to uh, Nicholas Brooks as he's coming off for this play. I'm not sure why. Maybe his helmet fell off or something like that. But he's out of the, this play, at least this play, and he seems angry about it as Figueroa works his way in the pocket, spinning, and is able to muster up a, a good run in his dang near the uh, first down. Looks like Evan Mano, the quarterback, was in on defense for that play. Nicholas Brooks. Let's get him off back the field in before now. we see an injury. Yeah, so, exactly. Can't afford that to happen. He was when you know we when uh, we first talked to his grandfather about the uh, Mano Mano by the way. When we first talked to his grandfather about the injury. He said, you know, it, it might be late August when this or uh, late August, <laughs> late November when this kid comes back, and you know he's 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 back well with with uh, within a month of that. So that's good. It's the props of being young, you know, speedy <laughs> recovery. Yep. As my grandpa always says. <laughs> yep. It's a very grandpa oh, thing man. to say is a false start on the Wildcats will push him back five yards. Enjoy it while you're young. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather always said, life is like a roll of toilet paper. And the, the further you get down, Sheets just keep on flying off, and those sheets are the years. <laughs> Seems like a very philosophical guy. <laughs> yeah. Or just old and quiet. You know? <laughs> He's got a lot of time to just think. Yep. Yep, so 9.52 remaining. It's going to be third down, third and about six. Wildcats. Looks like we got a double coverage on Rocco here to the left side. Is yeah, definitely a little there? shading over there from uh, Brooks to safety. Oh, Figueroa almost tripped up. We got a flag up. laundry on the field. And I think this play will be coming back, as usually when you see a flag in the backfield like that, it's normally holding, and that's exactly what it is here. Huge flag for the Tigers, back them up. Oh, and, and did I just see, yeah, another flag comes out late. Looks like something extracurricular. I did see some pushing and shoving over there on the Gardner sideline, and Let's hope this one's not on Littleton. You know, you'd really hate to see uh, 
Gardner going back 10 yards turned into Gardner moving forward 15. Yeah, 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 and an automatic first. But hopefully the Tigers were able to stay out of that extracurricular activity. You know, that's that's where our friend uh, Reedy always is at, at the end of the play. He's always, uh, you know, Ooh. getting extra contact in or jibber drawing or something. Both on the defense there. That's good. Back them way up. Or the offense, rather, my apologies. You know, offense, defense. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Yeah, but, I mean, nonetheless, this is going to bring up third and a country mile for the Wildcats as they just keep on backing up. Now, if you're Coach Ferrante here, uh, you got to be telling them to uh, fall back. Take an extra five yards, maybe, and yeah. drop that second safety and just play some prevent. Maybe shade over the top on Rocco. Don't want to let get him get loose. We, we saw what happened at the end of that first half, and uh, it was scary there for a Yeah, second. it was. It was. You know, and to your point, oh, as a, oh, I know, he's just tossing the flag back to that ref. Um, you know, to that point, you know, Fronte's got to be saying, buckle down, buckle down. Do not let anything behind you. Keep everything in front. And stay smart, you know. You can't you can't have a blunder here because you got to get them off the field here. It's about third, and I mean they don't. It's it's so long they don't even have it up on the scoreboard. But it's probably I don't know 30 yards or maybe just shy, maybe 28 yards, something like that. If I'm the defense, I'm watching out for a screen here to um, Aiden Sparrow, and the defense is just gonna have to fly right. the ball, gain tackle, and bring him down. Right. Bronte's got to be saying, know the situation, know where the line to gain is. Figueroa, we do, does pass it. He just kind of dumps it off, though. To Sparrow. To the speedster. A little bit of room, still fighting. Not going to be enough, though. It's like we're going to have a fourth and ten. I mean, I can't see Gardner going for it here, but you just no. never know. Right, and, you know, you get such a big gain like that on third down. You know, as as you were saying, like, do they decide to go for this at this point in the game? Personally, I don't. Looks but like now they're that, keeping the offense yeah. out there. Now that you made it all the way up to the midfield, you know, maybe they do want to take the risk here. Tigers need to watch the ball here. Could be trying to get a free five yards and perhaps go for it then. So be mm -hmm. smart, watch the ball, and can't jump off sides here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know Ferrante is yelling watch, to watch the ball. You just know it. And when he talks, they listen. <laughs> yeah. Going for uh, a little quick release punt. Good play by them. You see, and that's such a good play because, you know, as the Tigers, you don't really practice something like that. And, and on top of that, you know, you, you're, you're unsure if they're actually going to run a play or not. And you, you don't drop a man back there to receive the kick. So as long as that ball bounces, that's where that ball is going to be. And that's where the Tigers are going to start with it. It's a really great point, Ben. Didn't have the chance to put the guy back. Totally eliminates the chance of a return. It's a good football play right it there. It is. It is. We've seen that a couple times against the Tigers. I don't know if we've seen the Tigers do it yet. Maybe once or twice. But it is a good play. Mano in the backfield. Got uh, Brooks down below. And they do hand it to Millie, and he's just about up for no gain. He's able to shed about four tackles, but yeah, didn't pick yeah. anything up on the carry. Yeah, you know, you can shed four tackles, but if the blocking's not there, it doesn't <laughs> matter too much. Which it's been there most of the night, but it has. Know, can't hold him back. Forever. It has. It's been a little on and off, but there have been some drives where the Tigers just look really just sound all around. And it starts up, it starts up front with that old line. It really does. You know, those they don't get much praise, but it, it, they don't want to hear their name because if they do hear their name, it's probably because they've done something wrong, and that's just the nature of the position, you know. None of the glory, all the scrutiny. <laughs> yeah. Mano in trouble. 
Gonna escape left side. Owen oh, bottled up and slammed down by the Wildcats defender. That was a big boy in there on the stop. Thought I might have seen a little bit of a face mask there, but yeah. must have just got a hold of the jersey. Yeah, it's so tough to see from up here. But yeah, maybe maybe do get the hand up there and the face mask. Now, if you're the Tigers backed up deep in your own territory, third and ten, Yeah. do you put it through the air here, or do you just try to pick up some yards on the ground? And I think you do. See if one gets through. I think you do spread them out here. I, I say you have one man going on a, on a go route, something to take a shot with, but I'm, you're more so looking for a quick hitter here. You don't want to make any mistakes. Like they're gonna play the long game and yeah, chew some more clock out. So, I don't know. I, th I thought I don't know if I, I might be the only one. I thought maybe the Tigers might have got a little break there. I saw a little early movement there from Fitzgerald coming in motion, but that might have been just me. But it's still gonna be fourth down. You know, I get playing a conservative, but I mean at the same time, you, you gotta trust Mano to take care of that ball and maybe see something downfield. I, I would have yeah. put it in his hands personally, but. Yeah, you know, you know I, I see the thinking behind it. The defense is playing well. Absolutely, you know, you could say third and long. You know, we just want to run it. But hey, let's let's not forget your your biggest play of the game came from a third and long. It was third and fifteen, and they went over the top. So, Ooh. Franco rugby style. I think I touched it. A, yeah, a Gardner player touched it. Lou shaking his head no. Ferrante's in the mix. There's lots to unpack on this play. But the refs are certainly discussing. Looks like they're going to huddle here. Now this is where we'd really benefit from some instant replay. It looked like the Gardner defender, or, uh, yeah, or uh, uh, punt returner, excuse me, rather, uh, stuck his hand out to touch it, and then the Tigers got on it. You know, if this was the NFL, perhaps we'd be paying a visit to New York. But Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get Gene Steratore on the mic and, and have him see what he thinks. But, you know, unfortunately, we just don't have that luxury here at LCTV. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But, yeah, I mean, it is going to stay Wildcats ball. And that is a shame because he, I, it was kind of interesting the way the Wildcats reacted. I mean... It did look like to me that that player touched it, but nobody re reacted as if he did, and the player did not react as if he did. Normally, if you touch it, you go and you run and you get on the ball as quick as you can. But All right, first and ten for the Wildcats. They hand this one off to the speedster. That's going to be Sparrow up to the 20-yard line. Gain of about 25, 30 there. Sparrow, one of the captains for this Wildcat team. That's what, that's probably his biggest play of the night, uh, not including that uh, little garbage time end around at the end of the first half. You know, we're really seeing this Gardner offensive line here up close, and as we mentioned in the first half, they are some big kids. They do. They So props to Littleton. They've handled themselves in the trenches there, controlled the line of scrimmage. Yep, absolutely. Let's keep that going. Coming up on four and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. First and 10 here from the 20. As the Wildcats got a few guys in the backfield. Figueroa hands it off, but before that, a timeout is called by the Wildcats. So they, you know, Coach didn't like the look or something, but they want to think about this one again. They, they want to, uh, they want to draw something up here. And well, you know, that's going to take us to the next segment of this broadcast, and uh, we're going to head right into Allen's playbook here. And I want to know if, if you're the Wildcats, what, what kind of a play are you running here on first and ten from the twenty? I mean, you just call the timeout. They're really thinking about this, so. Yeah, I mean. You just saw Aiden Sparrow rip off a 30-yard gain there. I don't see any reason right. why you'd go back to him. Right. Um, they haven't had much success running it up the middle, so if I'm Gardner, I'm looking to get him out in space, maybe a little quick pitch outside, maybe a little halfback screen. Right. Just get it out there quick and let him do his thing. Yeah, yeah. As, 
shipping up to Boston is playing here at Alumni Field and the fans are really getting into it. And if I'm the defense, you know, got to contain, keep them inside. That's where they've been doing best. And I'm sure Ferrante told them that and just got to buckle up here and make a stand. Right. Oh, he's swallowed up in the backfield. And you know, Will, you were just talking about what Ferrante was, was saying. But you know what he's saying now? He's saying the potty's in the backfield. <laughs> the potty's and in we're the bringing backfield. the chips and the soda. <laughs> <laughs> Good play by the Tigers there. As we yep. mentioned, they've been controlling that middle of the line of scrimmage. They have, you have. You got Alejandro in there. You got Casey Keenan in there. And if you're Gardner, I just I don't understand the timeout. You waste the timeout there just to call a run up the middle. I 100% I mean, agree. I thought it was an odd timeout from the jump, Will, and that's why I wanted to kind of go into your playbook there. I wasn't sure exactly what they were trying to do, but they just go for a traditional play, and the Tigers are ready for it. Yeah, and their coach better hope he doesn't want that one back at the end of this game. <laughs> yep. Figueroa looking. He's going to... Take this one, rip this one down and run for himself all the way to the left side and in. Oh, there is going to be a flag. This one might be coming back. There's no celebration on the field. You know, I saw Evan Fitzgerald on his back there. Maybe he got a little blindside block. That would be huge. That would be huge. I mean, you saw Figueroa just waltz his way in there. They can get that taken back and then hold it. Back him up. That's a huge penalty on Gardner. It is. It is. I mean, it obviously negates the touchdown. And not only that, but it sends them back further from where they began. And, you know, that's been a reoccurring theme for them today. Sloppy football on the offensive end. Lots of holding penalties. And it's really gotten them behind the chains on a couple of drives now. Mm-hmm. So I do believe, actually, that was a spot foul. I think that's how they call it in uh, high school. Uh, but it brings up second and about 12. Second and four, I think. I'm not sure what the scoreboard is saying. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Second and four. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know, no, normally I just rely on that scoreboard, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it, it wasn't the right call, and that was not the right call. Good job. Uh, second and four. A little confusion here from the Wildcats, figuring things out. Great tackle. Who is that? Really good is that tackle. Teddy Hunt on the tackle. Great play. I thought for a moment there it might have been called. Uh, there might be a false start penalty called on the on Gardner, but it's it, it doesn't matter anyways. The Tigers swallow it up. It, and it pushes them back about two yards to make it third and six. Third and six here. I don't know much about Gardner's kicking game, but I can't imagine if they got stopped here, they'd be looking for the three. Yeah, and, you know, they haven't tried to kick any extra points as of yet. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're probably right. They're... Should have two downs to get this one. Hand it off on a little bit of an end around to the speedster. It's going to be Andre Martins. It looks like they're going to give it to him by just an inch. Yeah, but you're now, right, Well, They did give it to him. They're going to bring up first down. If you're the Tigers here, though, you got first and goal from the 10-yard line. You know, not a lot of room for Gardner's offense to operate here. I think you just got to sell it on the run. If they want to pass it, go for it. I and mean, yeah. feed us through the air. They haven't done it so far this game. So. Right. As the clock continues to just tick. Maybe click, quick slant top of your screen. They don't do it, though. They run it. Got another holding call from the looks of it. it he's going to get in, but it's not going to matter. Holding. Offense, back him up again. <laughs> yeah, a lot of flags being thrown. The refs are not afraid 
to throw the flags and you know they they don't want to keep those things in their front pocket it's friday night you know this is their time this is that show <laughs> might be hearing a lot of gardeners versus the refs after this one but we'll just have to go back and play the tape and see if <laughs> see if they're actually penalties or not i mean that looked like a clear cut hold to me yeah it did it did and you know it's that's that's one of the one of the many holdings that have been called so far in this game. And it's just penalties they they've really been the story so far for Gardner. Unable to get the offense going. As they it, it's first down but it's first and 19 first and goal from the 19 yard line. They Great zip it play in there, there by Jamison Haggerty. Number 11. <laughs> Jameson Haggerty on the stop. And um, Andre Martins there was the targeted receiver. A little little bugger out wide. Wasn't able to get his hands on that one. Throw was a little high, but for the most part, it was on the money. And like Will said, great coverage there by uh, Jameson Haggerty. Haggerty times it perfect, comes in there, makes the play. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I know... You know, you're no stranger to playing CB. <laughs> no, I'm not. So and you know how, how big of a play that is, especially down there when you're isolated by yourself on the goal line. Love to see that from a fellow CB. <laughs> Textbook play there by him. They do sweep this one out. And he's chug a lug lugging, and it looks like he's going to be into the end zone, and that's going to be Sparrow, the captain for the Wildcats. So after all of that, after all of the penalties, they still are able to score. And the uh, the Gardner Wildcats, besides the penalties, they look they look pretty sound there on the run. You know, props to Gardner. They uh, just kept sticking with their guy, Aiden Sparrow, feeding him the rock. Didn't do much in the first half. Stuck with him in the second, and he made a huge impact on that drive there. So can't blame him, and... Yeah, he was just fighting down. He knew where that goal line was. He was reaching out the ball. He fell over it, and that's all she wrote. And all of a sudden, a game where Littleton has had been controlling to the, the, the totality of the game so far, and all of a sudden they're going to be down here two points and maybe four pending this uh, conversion. And if you have Littleton there, you just got to forget about what happened on defense and come out and respond on offense. Offense has been a bit quiet for quite a while now. I'd love to see them start to air the ball out a little bit more. I think Gardner's really pinned down on the run. And yeah. I mean, we saw success with the pass in the first half, so I, I don't see why you don't go back to it here now that you're down. Right. I mean, Tigers came out. They, they hit a uh... Mano to Bronco on the big play. They score first that way, and then their next drive after that is just run central, and and they run it beautifully. And you're all of a sudden you're thinking, Gardner who, five and zero oh who, but but you know, just like that, the Tigers are chasing here. You know, I don't know what Coach Justin Leonard has cooked up in that playbook of his, but if you're asking me, I'm coming out on first down. Giving it back to Milner. Yeah. See how many yards he gets there. Maybe come back to him on second. And then third down, if it comes to that play action, I think Gardner's going to pin their ears down. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to stop that run, and perhaps we can catch him over top. Yep, yep. And, yeah, we haven't seen a lot of play action from the Tigers, so it, it, it might be a good opportunity. One thing I do want to mention is Brooks over here. Nicholas Brooks on the sideline here. Good player for the Tigers. He's getting looked at. Uh, lower body injury kind of limps on over to the uh, bench. So hopefully he ends up all right. It's like trainers busting out an ice pack. And it's like the right side of his neck maybe got shaken up a little bit. Let's hope that he can get through this injury and see him back out on the field shortly. Yeah, I don't know if it's – he does have an ice pack on the neck. I don't know if it's a neck or a leg or whatever, but – he was certainly hobbling over to the bench. I think he's just banged up all around. He's really been giving it his all tonight. Yeah. And, you know, key player for the Tigers, so let's hope for the best on 
that front of things. All right, two point conversion here. Figueroa drops back, fires with that gun of his, and it is incomplete. Another Haggerty. play by Haggerty. I mean, he is locking it down over there on the left side. Love to see it. Yeah, Figueroa had nowhere to go on that one. He just said, you know what, I'm just, I'll give it to the solo receiver out wide, you know, maybe take a shot at him, but Haggerty's just right there, as Will said. I mean, it's a couple plays in a row where you, Haggerty has stood out. One thing, ladies and gents, you know, we talked about this in the first half. We definitely want to make mention of it again. But tonight's game sponsor is going to be DiNapoli over there in Westford, over on Great Road, just across the Littleton border, just into Westford. They do deliver, guys. I Scan that QR code in the top right of your screen and, and get a nice little pizza, sub, salad, whatever, for the end of this half because this is shaping up to be a great one, guys. So big thanks to them. You know, Will talked about this before, but we, we both had some slices of that pizza. And that pizza was good, you know. <laughs> I might have had a couple. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the sauce, it's sweet, but it ain't too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, looking at the scoreboard here, 14 to 12, that, um, those two missed extra points. The first one, you go for two, you don't get it, and then the blocked. Yeah. On a second, that's the difference in this game right now. So yeah, I mean, you would hate to see the Tigers go down on that, but you know, if I was a betting man, I I wouldn't count on that. I think they're <laughs> gonna come out here and put together a nice drive, yep. punch it in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, and and I'm surprised, like you said, they went for it uh, when they scored that first touchdown for two. They didn't get it, but then, you know, you thought when they scored their second touchdown, they would come out and go for it for two then, but that's when they kicked the extra point. So a little a little backwards there, if I do say so myself. Uh-oh, oh, oh, man, oh, watch out. He got back on it. Recovery by the Tigers. I think number, Reedy, number Reedy always has a nose for the ball, and he oh, was able to Reedy. jump on that one, but Mano did lose it. It was a strip sack there for Gardner. What a great play by Owen there. Deserves a lot of props for that. This could be a completely different ball game right now if Gardner gets a hold of that. Yeah, and, and you know, we we bring up Reedy pretty much on a weekly basis because this kid, he's a dirt nose player. He always follows the ball no matter what. He knows where the ball is, and, and you just got to love that about him. He's always hustling towards the ball. I've said this multiple times this season. I really like that about him. It's a great quality to have. Three Gardner players were after that ball, and he came up with it. Yep. 3v1. As they run it up with Milner for maybe seven yards. Yeah, I mean, well, he, he ain't no Brock Davis jumping on that ball. <laughs> he knows how to secure it when he gets his hands on it. As, uh, ladies and gents, you might have heard, the fans are getting excited here. A little jumping going around in the, in the stands. A little rustling. You might have been able to hear it on the broadcast, but maybe not. Now, I think we're going to take this one to the fourth quarter as the clock ticks down here. Give the Littleton Tigers a little bit more time to drop their play. Yeah. So, I mean, taking a look at some of these other LHS teams for the fall of 2024. Okay, you got boys cross country. I think maybe last time we looked, they were one and four, so two and four. Okay, making progress. That's good. That's good. Girls cross country, two and four again. All right, we'll get better with some practice. Boys Varsity Soccer, solid record, three ties, kind of notable. Will, that bar, b Boys Varsity Golf, seven and eight. They were 500 last time we checked, so, you know, they can get back to 500 this week. That'll be huge. Girls Varsity Field Hockey, three and nine. You know, just a little bit more practice. It's a long season. It's a long, long season, two ties, but the big, the star of the show in the bottom right of your screen is the Girls Varsity Soccer. Oh, Ten and it done. three. Ten and three. They they've been good for quite some time now. They you know they, they have a lot of good young players on that team, so they should just continue to keep on rolling. They've almost kind of built up a dynasty of of, of uh you know girls varsity soccer here in Littleton. It's good stuff. You know, they lose a couple of key players and they still keep the train rolling. Plug yeah. and play. I mean Yeah, a couple of collegiate really athletes they're missing in there. It doesn't seem to matter. They're still winning games, and I do believe 
Uh, the JV team coached by Sam Palmer is still undefeated. So what a heck of a job out. he's doing. Quick hitter over to the long side of the field. Yeah, Sam Palmer, a good pal of ours, you know, plays softball, flag football with him. And <laughs> yeah. You can just tell by talking to the guy, he's, he's met for the job and what a great, great job he's doing with the uh, girls. He's, he is. Soccer. He, he certainly knows how to corral a team together and, and you know, he's, he's a good coach, man. He, he knows a lot about teamwork and making it happen. So, disappointing drive there from the Tigers. Yeah, and they're forced to kick it on fourth and long. Uh-oh. Gets it out of there. Roughing the kicker. As, as some fans in the Littleton section are yelling a little bit. But yeah, it was it was that rugby style kick and uh, Branco just rolled right into about three defenders and I they might call roughing the punter here. I think that's what the flag is. As and Will as you know there's to. there's two degrees to roughing the punter. You can have the five yard or you can have the automatic first down. Right. Let's see what the Tigers get here. He did start to run with it. Got a little antsy and was up in the pile trying to kick the ball so they might pick this one up here it's, it's hard to tell yeah they do wave it off you know and that's really interesting because see uh, the last few weeks or so the tigers have gone to this rugby style kick i keep saying it but it's where the the uh, punter rolls out and then makes the kick you see it a lot in college a lot and and not not uh not in the nfl per se but you know, the Tigers, they weren't always doing that. They, they had the traditional punt. They switched to this thing, and man, uh, Bronco just rolls right out into about three defenders. He had nowhere to go. And it, and it results in, a, in maybe a t uh, not even a 10-yard kick. Hand it to the speedster. Sparrow again. Sparrow. They're just going to keep feeding him. As Evan Fitzgerald pumps his fist, great play by him. Now he's fired up. Hopefully he can rally this defense around him and they can get a big stop. Four yard gain there. A little bit more than you'd like to see for a fist bump, but <laughs> can't blame him. Yeah. He's excited. Yeah, you know, you make a tackle. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to see. You think you make the tackle two yards in the backfield, exactly. but it really ends up four yards downfield. They give it to him on a little jet sweep. That's going to be number five on the carry there, Dakota Wells. He's touched the ball multiple times tonight. He's very close to a first down. I think, I think he did get it, though. Nope, they're not going to give it to him. If I'm Coach Ferrante here, I'm telling my players to start punching at that ball. We need a fumble. We need a, It doesn't look like um, Figueroa is going to throw an interception. Yeah. He has an all season. we got to get some sort of turnover, and I think it's going to be a fumble. So yeah. let's punch at that ball and see if it can jar loose. Yeah, a little, a little Peanut Tillman, if you will. <laughs> yeah. A little Fred Warner. I mean, you see it in the NFL every single game nowadays. Figueroa rushes up to the line. It's a almost just become keeper. a part of the game. Yeah. Figueroa just able to uh, to pick up the first down. Gets about three. It's getting a little chippy out there. Wildcats and Tigers going back and forth yeah, as can... we enter crunch time here in this fourth quarter. Yep. Yeah, I can definitely see some lips moving out there, some extracurriculars. I mean... That's that stuff's okay until the yellow flag comes out and it's on <laughs> and it's on the yellow team. Bring Dakota in motion. And they sling it out to Sparrow who has room. He's going across the 20, 10. Looking for the pylon. Gonna be short. Maybe around the six yard line. Good run by him. Not, nowhere to go right in front of him. Breaks it out right. Huge hole. And takes it all the way down within the 10. Good tackle by Hunt there to keep him out of the end zone. Gives the Tigers a chance to maybe make a stop here. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Tigers, I mean, 
You, this is this is it right here. You, I, it, it'd be very hard to go down two possessions and then end up, you know, coming back to win this one with the way the game's been going so far. So it'll be it'll be a development to see what Gardner does once they. I mean, you you think if they do score, they they go up eight and then they just kick an extra point. But do they have an extra point kicker to make it a two point two possession game? We're gonna have to see. Now, hopefully, it doesn't get to that point and the Tigers are able to just stuff them right in and get away with a huge stop. is going to take it himself up the middle, breaks it right, and he waltzes right in there. 6'2", 230 pounds, crossing the goal stop. line. It's a freight train, and no one's getting in the way. But even bigger, you could possibly even say, even bigger than that touchdown right here, is what happens on this play right now. Because if you can keep it an eight-point game, you keep this game within one possession, your chances are way higher than if you go down nine and you go down two possessions. You know, I have to say, Ben, I I think I would have liked to see the Tigers maybe call a timeout there. The defense just looked gassed. They didn't yeah. have anything left in them. And yeah. there was very little resistance there on that right. QB sneak. But I mean, if you're Leonard, you're probably thinking, hey, I want to save that timeout for later in the game, but at the same time, it's a very <laughs> crucial moment. Yeah. Figueroa, keeper, roaming left, trying to find something. Now he's coming back right, has to get Good rid of play. it. And a great defense, and the Tigers keep this a one possession game, and that is massive. That is massive. Yeah, he dumps it off to Dakota Wells, and he's just swallowed up immediately, nowhere to go. Good job there by Figueroa just to stay up on his feet and to try to get something going there, but just nothing doing. Great defense there from the Tigers. Now offensively, we really haven't seen anything from the Tigers since that first quarter. Yeah. And you got to imagine down eight here. Let, first down, let, they're not going to expect it. Let's just come out here and start slinging the ball. I mean, Gardner's obviously contained the run at this point in the game. I, it's not working too well anymore, and there's no more room for error at this point. So let's just live and die by the pass and see what Evan Mano's got for us. Yep. Yep, I mean, you said it. This this Littleton Tigers offense been a little flat here in the second half, to say the least. And I know the defense just got scored on there, but they've really been able to keep this team in it. So credit to them to even give the offense a chance here to go tie it up as we see a great recovery there from number 77. Yeah, you know, and if you're the Wildcats, I just don't understand why you, I don't know if that was a squib or an onsider, but whatever it is, it goes about 10, 15 yards, and that is just not the play because you give the Tigers great starting field position. You give an offense that just seems to have no momentum in this second half, great starting field position. Maybe this is the momentum that the Tigers need to put this ball in the end zone. It's a very good point there. I mean, basically just handed it to him at the 50-yard line. So I don't, I don't see what the thinking was there, but I'm sure the Tigers will take it. Man, I'm going to fire across. Oh, no. Did he, did he come up with that ball? And what he did intercept that one. I thought it was an incomplete pass. I swear that ball hit the ground, but it wasn't. You know, I will say, Mano, I think he was looking out there for uh, Teddy Hunt, maybe Haggerty. It was hard to tell. And that ball was just a little behind and, yeah. and intercepted there by the Wildcats defender. And, oh, man, that is not what the Tigers needed. You know, you thought, well, I mean, the whole stadium probably thought they were going to run this one to Milner. They don't. Uh, Mano drops back, and this ball, and they just turn the ball over on the first play of the drive. I mean, that's just a tough break for the Tigers any way you slice it. Ball's a little bit behind them, but didn't deserve to be an interception. Just a tough bobble. No. Ball's right into the defender's yeah, hands. Just deflected, and, and that's all it takes. Tigers do a good job there stopping Sparrow after about a one-yard run. Number 58's fired up, and rightfully so. He made a great play there. Um, that's going to be King. King Crew. We're just going to call him King because he made a hell of a play there. <laughs> yeah, yep. He's fired up about it. And, you know, number 58, he's 
he's kind of one of them unsung heroes down there inside in the trenches. He certainly can plug a gap, and he's come up with a number of plays for the Tigers so far tonight. Big second down here. If you can force him into a third and long, it's going to be huge for this defense to get off the field. Yeah, King Pru, that X. That X kind of, the X at the <laughs> yeah. end of the name kind of uh, gets you mixed up. But when you've been living in Littleton for a long time and you recognize the name, it, may, it certainly helps. And I believe it's good, this is going to be a false start, maybe. Now, if you're the Tigers, this is all you can ask for here. They're backed up. You have to get a stop here. This is perhaps the biggest defensive possession they've had of the game. Yes, perhaps. Figueroa dropping, looking, firing. A little bit of separation out there and a lot of contact and a couple of flags come in. And this might be pass interference on top of the catch. And look who it is. Mr. Rocco Roy. <laughs> you know, with the stats that Will was mentioning earlier, you know this kid's going to be good for at least one big play a game. As we mentioned before, five games played, five receptions. <laughs> average of 56 yards per reception, and we just saw it again right there. Ben. Yeah. But multiple flags here. And it's, nobody really seems to be walking down towards the Tigers' end of the field. I will say, I think one of them's defensive pass interference by the looks of. I thought I, there was definitely contact. I, I think definitely there's a pass interference, but maybe there's an offsetting penalty. They call, yeah, it is, it is going to be on Littleton. They call a hold on Littleton. They call pass interference on Littleton. And they decline them both because it was a great play. You know, would have liked to see a piece of laundry for some taunting after the play. Yeah. There. Seemed a little excessive, but, yeah. you know, the refs are going to let him play. Let's just hope Littleton gets that same treatment. Yeah, you thought, you know, Rocco, he was doing a little extra flexing and a little jibber jarring. I mean, you saw Zay Flowers get flagged for that in the AFC Championship. So, yeah. You, yeah, Teddy Hunt, one of those guys who seems to get flagged with that penalty, including last week, as another flag comes out. This is just about as many flags as I've seen in a high school game, I think, ever. This is a lot of yellow, yellow, a lot of yellow on the field, and I'm not talking about the Tigers' uniforms, you know. Hey, but hey, we talked about this before, you know, it's Friday night, the rest, this is their night. They, they want to show what they got. They want to show how far they can throw them yellow things. <laughs> But it, it's, against, it's against the Wildcats, so none of us Littleton folk can complain about any of those penalties. Except the one just before this. <laughs> Wildcats behind the chains once again. Let's see if the Tigers can capitalize. Figueroa searching, throwing to his right. Is that Rocco, Willie? That is not Rocco. That's it's number three. Andre Martin. And a beautiful ball delivered by Figueroa right on the money. And Martin's able to come down with it. And, um, you know, if you're Littleton, I hate to say it, but as they say, that, that might be all she wrote. I've taken a look. Taking a look, I mean, we, we went over this at the beginning of the game, but Gardner, they're 5-0, and and, and they're just crushing teams. So, I mean, the fact that they've only had 26 points is pretty good on Littleton's defense, but, you know, they, they're not a stranger to scoring points, and uh, it's certainly starting to show here with 6.26 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, last four games, basically scoring in the 40s, each one of those games. Yeah. You knew it was only a matter of time before they broke through. Oh, Speedster runs right through a man, and once we get a number, we'll tell you, but that was a heck of a play by him. That's happened on the far side. It's a little hard to see from here, but he just ran. I think I think that was Bronco at the pylon he he met bronco at the pylon and just finished right on through for the two-point conversion to make him go up 16 points 
But you know, Ben, we've seen crazier things. This is still a ball game. You have six minutes left, all three of your timeouts. Yep. You need a quick score here. It's going to depend what, exactly. It's going to depend what happens on this drive right now and how much time you take doing it. You know, I think I think if Littleton, you know, like you were saying, well, I think if they are able to go down the field here and put another score on the board, you know, it, it all of a sudden it becomes a one possession game again. And this Gardner team that's been used to winning a lot and hasn't faced a lot of adversity, it might it, they, they might shudder and uh, fold a little bit. And uh, the Tigers can find themselves right back in this one. So stick around Hold like a lawn chair <laughs> as uh Number 16 there on special teams for the Tigers. It's going to be uh, Andrew Harvey picking up the ball, a little ground ball over to third base, smothers it, throws on over to first for the out, and they have the ball here at the 37-yard uh, line. Now, if you're Evan Mano here, you need to just lead this offense. Forget about what happened the last drive. It's a tough break. Like we said before, it didn't deserve to be an interception, but it happens, and got to air it out here. and. Get your team back in it. Yeah, you know, the Tigers, we know they want to run it. We know they're a run first team, but they just can't really do much running here. The, the, the clock is not on their side. It is not their friend right now. As they do run it up the gut. And, you know, you can run it all you want at this juncture in the game, but that's just going to take, if you're getting only, you know, five yards a run in, in any other situation, that's a great gain. But and it, it, it's just going to take too much time if they keep doing that. Got to preserve some clock here, and the only way to do that is A, call some timeouts, which you're not going to do in this situation, or B, air it out. Yeah. Incomplete pass stops the clock at the very least. Yeah, so it seems like they got to go with the ladder there. It's about second and five. And they go with another run, and they can't do that because it's a loss, and it's a loss of about three yards, and more importantly, about 25 more seconds is going to come off the clock here at least. The only thing with that there is I see them trying to get outside, but now you have an obvious third and passing down. I, I mean, you got two two downs here to get the first, but now you back them up, and yeah. Gardner can just sit back and wait for the pass. I, I don't know yeah, about the two I, I, I don't plays un there. understand it either. You, you've gone one yard, and you've taken off a minute plus off the clock to this point. They run it again, little hole there. You know, if you're going to run it, I would love to see a sense of urgency. Maybe go no huddle, hurry yeah. up there to the line. I mean, we're just chewing clock here. And yeah, they they run it with Taglieri to get some yardage to make this a more manageable fourth down. They do, which is good. Brings up fourth and one. And um, this is the game right here. they got to get this. Fourth down, you didn't want to see a fourth down this early, but at least it's fourth and short. Mano standing back there. He's ready. They should give this one to Milner if you ask me. They do that. Gets He's it. got it. Actually, that's just that's JT, as we call him, Jake Taglieri again on the tackle. So, Oh, Milner, I'm just noticing, sitting down right now on the bench right beside Nicholas Brooks. He is out of the game. I so, wonder when that happened. Yeah, it had I to be the last offensive drive. Yeah, I think it's been a little while. He's been sitting there. I don't think he was out there for the last defensive series. Interesting development there. We'll have to uh, follow up on that. But it looks like those. I mean, those guys are helmets off there. It doesn't look like they're coming back into this one. Oh, as as Tagli Harry runs into a brick wall. Made of Tyler Corrado, the junior, number 15. Late flag, maybe some taunting. He said it was going to get chippy, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have it. Wow. It's on the Tigers. And I think it was a legal man downfield. No, it was a personal foul. They call the Tigers on taunting? Yeah. That's ridiculous. 
They let Rocco get away with it, but not the Tigers. Yeah, apparently not. Apparently not the Tigers. Yeah, that just kind of speaks for itself as the clock is, is still ticking. I mean, you got to assume we're airing it out now. You'd have to assume that. Another, that is... another run play is almost thrown in the towel at this point in the game. Yeah. That's such a bad penalty on Littleton. You just cannot have that happen. That's a mental error. You can't have a mental error in that situation. That's a big play. You, instead, you're all the way backed up. Yeah, and, and it, well, we, me and you have been talking about it. They are taking their sweet time. Look at them in the huddle as, as we're going to be under three minutes to go before this ball snap. Well under. Yeah, I wish I knew. Uh, I wish I could get in the head of Coach Justin Leonard on the sidelines there. I, I'm just so confused about how this drive has been managed. I mean, I know it's tough that I know it's tough to have your best, perhaps your best player in Milner on the sideline, but you still gotta go for it. As they take a timeout after letting the minute yeah. drain off the clock there, I'm just. Tough well, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't really know why you, why you let so much time go off the clock and then you rip a timeout. Um, I don't know. I unless uh, the only thing I'm thinking is, hey, we are one of our best players is out, and you know another great player of ours is out too. So we're just, you know, we're gonna try to get out of this thing with no injuries. And they do. They they send out the scout team. That's what they're doing. They've given up wow. on this one, and it seemed like they they gave up with like six minutes to go. They were they were not hustling at all. And you just hate to see it because there was still a chance. There really was. It's just two possessions, you know. It's 16 points, but at the end of the day, that's only two possessions. Very interesting. I, I yeah, I kind of lost for words on this one. Yeah, and the the fans, the fans are. Starting to shuffle out of this place, too. Yeah, We're definitely. getting word that um, there was a little disagreement on the Tigers' sideline and led to that minute getting drained off the clock and could have led to the coach's decision to let this one run out and get the backups in there, maybe. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. It's very interesting way to end this game you know if anything you want to finish strong if anything you want to have a try to put together a nice drive right here and at the very least you know it'll it'll help you get ready for next week but uh but they don't they don't will they uh they decide to run the clocks maybe some argument happens but still regardless you had a chance and and uh it, that chance went away pretty quickly and it really is a shame because I thought the Tigers played a pretty good ball game here tonight and had a chance to win it. You know, kids fought tooth and nail out there. They yeah. really wanted this one. And yeah. To just give it up like that at the end is, I hate to see it. I, I would have loved to have this one at least go down to the wire and give themselves a fighting chance. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. The, the first half of the Tigers, it was great. They were doing exactly what they wanted. The defense was playing good. You go in with the lead. You have a little four-point lead, 12 to 8. You've, you got a monster scoring team that the last four games has scored like at least 40 points. You hold them to eight in the first half. And, you know, you're thinking only good things. And it just, just got out of hand a little. It, the Tigers' offense just came out a little flat and things got out of hand. But... You know, looking at the positives right now, there are some guys out on this field right now that, that don't get some normal chances. And, you know, if they can stand out and make a couple of plays, they, they might get themselves some real playing time. And and it, it's also important to note that this this team does not have a JV team. So this this these backup players that are in right now, these underclassmen, I mean, this is an opportunity for them to make some plays. Yeah, and I know we've been talking a lot about how we uh, are a bit speculative on that last drive there and how they went about it. But on the flip side, it is nice to see some of these younger guys who don't get to see the field as much. Right, a little opportunity. Yep. Get, 
get their feet under him a little bit. And mm -hmm. maybe that's what Coach had thinking in his mind is he wants to get these young guys out <laughs> and build for the future a little bit. So I, I mean, at one point, at what point was he like, yeah, we're getting the starters out of there. It all seemed to happen very quickly. Bubble. Good recovery there. Little QB keeper. 52. QB keeper, I, I do believe it was uh, Austin Haggerty uh, who fumbled it and then picked up there by by uh, maybe Cooper Jurgens, able to follow on it. And now, now you're going to see some, some new jerseys come in for Gardner, but they're still, still keeping those big boys out there. And uh, they're just going to go into the victory and kneel this one. As this one comes to an end, Ben, I just wanted to take a second to, you know, just show how grateful I am to be in this booth alongside you for LCTV. And what a great experience it was. First class yep. all around. And can't ask for much more on a Friday night under the lights. I, mean, I hope all the viewers at home enjoyed. And yeah. Until next week. Hopefully the Tigers can bounce back. Yeah, absolutely will. You know, it was great announcing this game with you. Great to get away from Lincoln for a change. <laughs> that was very refreshing and that was very fun. You know, and just a quick shout out to all these guys at LCTV. Uh, obviously, Mark Crory at the helm. Oh, always does a great job. We got Kirby Dolak on the camera, who did a great job tonight filling in for Damon Abbetz, who's usually on the camera at LCTV. Um, but a really just solid and classy production over here from LCTV, as always. And me and Will are, are happy to be a part of it, that's for sure. Ladies and gents, and, you know, we, we really hope you enjoyed watching this one. It, it was a good game for quite some time, and then, you know, things just kind of started to fizzle out for the Tigers. But definitely some positive things to build on, Absolutely. you know. You know, you know it was no easy feat coming out here and beating a team like Gardner, but they fought and yep. got to be proud of the performance. Exactly. And, you know, with that being said, the Tigers, they fall to 3-3. Three and three. They're going to be at St. Paul next week. It's going to be a Saturday. It's going to be over there. I don't believe we are doing the game over here at, on LCTV, so you're going to be without us, but we'll be back for the home game uh, on Halloween night versus Quabbin. So please, ladies and gents, join us then. Have a wonderful night. And uh, for Will Allen, my name is Ben Storman, signing off. Take it easy and join us next time on LCTV. Peace.